Mike Moore Media. I'm talking to the mayor of Stokesdale, Mike Crawford. Mayor, hey, how are you, sir? I'm well, Mike. Good to talk with you. Good to hear you again. Well, it's good to uh, be back together and make this connection and get an update on what's happening around Stokesdale. So bring us up to the minute, Mayor. Well, I, I, I think the biggest thing going on right now is I'd like to welcome our new deputy clerk, Robbie Wagner. He okay. started with us this past Monday. He shows a tremendous amount of promise. Uh, he's got some experience coming in. His background is in uh, in town government. Uh, we're looking very, very forward to what he might be able to bring to Soapsdale and what we might be able to do for him. Okay. Again, his name is? Robbie Wagner. Robbie Wagner. Okay. Welcome, Robbie. Yeah. The uh, What I'm covering today is the town council meeting we had on the 14th, uh, just the uh, last Thursday. Mm -hmm. The chief of police, Galden, reported uh, that the activity that they had had uh, were 108 calls. Uh, There were 63 uh, that dealt with uh, a medical, 40 that dealt with fire, and the rest of them were just other. We had a uh, rezoning uh, request in this meeting also. Oliver Bass is the planning uh, fellow for us who uh, helped to guide us through all of this. This is a rezoning of Highway 158. It is east of 68, and uh, it is right at the area, if you're familiar at all, with where the 158 bypass will take off west uh, from the current 158. It's right in that general area, which raised some questions for us. But it's a, it's a residential request. The request was to change that property uh, from a AG to uh, RS3, which is from agricultural to uh, single-family uh, single dwelling. Mm-hmm. The planning board recommended that we approval, approve it. The council did approve it with a four-to-one vote. Over the 4th of July weekend, uh, Councilman Tim Jones discovered a problem with our water tank. A company named Underwood had just completed work on our pressure release valve. Uh, Thanks to Mr. Jones' uh, diligence, and uh, uh, the problem was resolved. With help from Nature Construction, they monitored it over the weekend, and uh, Underwood came back in and made the, the necessary changes in the repairs. Mr. Jones, because of having to call in Uh, Yates and the additional expense, he was able to negotiate a nice little credit from Underwood for us, which was a nice way to save them their town money. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone knows Mr. Jones, they know Mr. Jones will save the town money. He doesn't watch the pennies. Yeah. The the development, the uh, blacksmith subdivision is trying to get an easement. Uh, They want the town to give them an easement for... um, the water system that they're, they're having to extend down into that area. This, uh, the North Carolina DOT has approved it, but our concern is we're not sure what responsibility we might have in the future should something go wrong. So we asked the uh, town attorney, Tom Medlin, to take a look and make sure that uh, the town is indemnified uh, against uh, whatever North Carolina DOT chose to do. The council was able to establish a park planning committee. This is something we haven't had. Uh, we do have some funds that are available for developing the park, and we want to do we want to do the right thing for the town and, of course, for the citizens. The committee currently is composed of two citizens and two council members. If I remember correctly, I believe we've got room for another citizen if someone has an interest in that particular committee. The things that we've talked about are anywhere from uh, reopening the concession stand uh, for, for events. I mean, we have an opportunity there if we can if, if we can make the events that we have there uh, attractive to bring in the citizens and uh, and whoever else would be involved in it. 
The council also agreed to close the town hall on Friday. This is beginning August the 5th. Uh, this is not a day of, uh, this is not a day off for the staff, but rather it's time for staff to catch up on their responsibilities. We are still running behind on some of our minutes from uh, some time back. We just haven't had the staff to cover it. And I think you know we lost our um, we lost our, our first deputy clerk a couple of months ago, and so they're still trying to do some catch up. Mm-hmm. Now, council unanimously, unanimously voted to approve uh, water rate increases. This is the bad news in it all, but uh, our our costs are coming up are going up from uh, our supplier, which of course is Winston Salem. We also have to be ahead of what may happen in the future. We've got to have enough of a, a reserve to cover uh, whatever contingencies there might be. Uh, this is the this is a large portion of the town's water supply, and we certainly don't want to have any problems with it. But there is a there is a water rate increase. It's modest, but it uh, it will uh, take effect. I believe I believe it will take effect in August. The council discussed the addition of a part-time deputy clerk, someone who would probably work 20 hours a week. Uh, this would help in administration. Uh, I think town clerk, it could be a town clerk, uh, administrative assistant. The duties, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and I are going to put together a uh, job description for this. Uh, Derek Boyd, of course, is our Mayor Pro Tem. He and I'll put together a, a description of duties, and we'll go on from there. Mm-hmm. The council discussed the Metropolitan Planning Organization. This is a consulting group of uh, elected officials that helps deal with the North Carolina DOT. And we, our questions were, how did, how was this formed? Uh, how do you get on this? organization, how, how are you appointed to it? Uh, we know we have a new representative, and his name is Reese Walker. Reese is a councilman from uh, Summerfield. I have, had the opportunity to speak with Reese uh, earlier this week, and he explained to me that some years back, one of their non-elected officials went before the North Carolina State Legislature and basically pled our case, our being the rural part of Northwest uh, Guilford County, that the only representation on that metropolitan board or metropolitan organization was uh, Greensboro and didn't think it was fair. And the legislature agreed with him. And they appointed a uh, a council member from Summerfield as the first additional member. And Reese has kind of inherited it since the retirement of the of the former representative. What this would do for us is we've had questions from our citizens concerning the repaving of 158. We weren't aware that that was really what was going on until uh, we started inquiring about it. It's something that we would be made aware of, should have been made aware of, uh, basically from this metropolitan organization. Reese also explained to me normally these plans or these uh, projects are planned uh, 18 months and two years in advance, and he was not involved in the organization at that time. But uh, Reese assures me he's going to keep us informed, and hopefully we can keep our citizens informed also. Okay, great. The other little bit, of, other little bit of good news: uh, the good town of Kernersville was very gracious in donating uh, a vault, which has a combination which secure the fireproof vault, it'll give us the opportunity to secure some of our records that are uh, they're fire protected, but they're, they're not as secure as they uh, need to be. This is, this is a very generous thing, and we do greatly appreciate it. Uh, but it is in place, and uh, we're ready to go with that. Mike, other than that, I don't know really what else we got going on. I know we've, we've had a couple of meetings since the last time we talked, but there haven't been a lot of big changes. Well, you you covered. I've taken notes here. You know, you've uh, you know the rezoning and the water tank issue and the park planning committee. That that's good to 
So that's coming together. And uh, they talked about the uh, water rates and um, that regional planning commission. And you, you covered a lot in that meeting, it sounds like. Well, I try. I yeah. try. Okay. Um, you know, and I'm wondering, too, um, just just another kind of sideline on that park planning committee. I know uh, I've been to your park uh, for several events, and it's a nice park, uh, but it uh, just not being used probably um, like it, it could be. Uh, so that will be helpful to have, uh, have some uh, people more involved in that, won't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And by, uh, by having the committee, then they can put forth some ideas. I mean, they can spend their time on uh, coming up with some ideas. I mean, uh, there's, there are all kinds of things that can be done. You know, you, you could add a basketball court. You could add some additional walkways. You could uh, you could maybe put in an amphitheater. We, uh, we talked about uh, adding a, a, a building, a small storage building, so that right now the, the uh, concession stand is, is serving that purpose. It's got some things in it that... Uh, out of sight, out of mind, that we might be able to move into a, a little storage building that uh, would give us an opportunity to use that concession stand. And for somebody, I mean, uh, all kinds of ideas there, too. Somebody could come in and operate it as a charitable thing. Uh, different groups could come in, and uh, as long as they operated it properly, then uh, enjoy the revenue off of it. There's, there's, there's all kinds of things that, that are possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots of good opportunities there for sure. Okay. Well, uh, Mayor. One uh, other thing. Oh, yeah. Let me, let, me mention, let me mention one other thing for everybody in Stokesville. We had some problems with the uh, uh, retrieval of our previous uh, trash, can, uh, trash pickup people, mm-hmm. Republic. We're trying to work through that. They are, uh, they've had some problems with getting equipment to pick up some of these cans. These are the uh, these are traditionally the blue cans that are uh, still out. There aren't that many left, but there are quite a few, and uh, it's a little frustrating. The uh, new company is GFL, and uh, if you have not uh, uh, contacted them for service, you need to contact them for service because it's not something that's just automatically done. Uh, and that company again is GFL, and if you need a phone number, contact the town hall. And the town hall can give you the uh, the contact. Okay, Very and that's good. pretty well covers it. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, we appreciate the update and uh, all of the um, the information there. And uh, hope you have a a good uh, weekend coming up. We'll talk again next month. Thank you, Mike. Thank you too. Bye. That's Mike Crawford. He is the mayor of Stokesdale. And uh, let me remind you, if you need to get more information about the town and uh, some things going on there, well, you can uh, go to their Facebook page um, or go to their website, actually, and um, and that is stokesdale.org. And uh, if you're new to the area and get more information right there about what's happening in the town of Stokesdale. Our program is sponsored by Crossroads Pharmacy. Uh, the folks there at Crossroads Pharmacy in, uh, in, in Oak Ridge there on Highway 68 North uh, providing great customer service uh, and uh, that uh, free delivery within a 10-mile radius. And uh, it's, it's lots of good things there going on at Crossroads Pharmacy, April and her staff. Uh, you may want to check out their Facebook page uh, because uh, she keeps that uh, current and uh, just... Uh, right up to the minute on uh, all kinds of good things there. So uh, go to their Facebook page for Crossroads Pharmacy. And they also have a location in Madison, right beside Fuzzies. And then we have Buy Right Supermarket. They're there on Ellisboro Road. I was talking to David at Buy Right last week, as a matter of fact, and I'm on their Facebook page right now. Look at this. Uh, specials on ribeyes and sirloins, New York strips and tenderloin and uh, all kinds of things to get ready for your weekend cookout. And then that's uh, Dave's Deli Heart, Hot Bar with uh, breakfast, lunch, and supper for you right there. That makes it nice and convenient. That's Buy Right Supermarket. And that's our program from Stokesdale this month. And be sure to support our local businesses.